are sulfates bad? The answer is depends, <laughs> like in so many things in cosmetics and science in general. So in a nutshell, sulfates aren't, quote, always bad. And the ones that we tend to use, SLS and SLES in particular, are not top contact allergens. They're not. Sulfate-free has become, you know, sexy, I think, on and off over the years that that, that sulfates issue becomes trendy and then wanes and then comes back. Key, I think this is maybe the most important thing to share, really. When something says sulfate-free, that's to me actually when you should be, your alarm bell should be going off more. Things that are sulfate-free, more often than not, tend to replace SLS and SLES with amidoamine surfactants. So cocamidopropyl, betaine, cocomidea, amidoamine, that thread, that string right there. So you could go to vmvinskin.com and look at cocamidopropyl, betaine, cocomidea. There's another one, oleo, something, something, <laughs> amidoamine also. Those are top contact allergens. So sometimes when you're shopping and you see sulfate free, you actually might be getting a top contact allergen in there in the form of an amidoamine surfactant. And as well, look for other allergens, known, proven, published contact allergens like fragrance and dyes and preservatives and things like that in there. So back to SLS and SLES. Here's the thing, and certainly I'll be answering this from the perspective of VMV hypoallergenics. And as for those of you who use VMV, as you know, our main thing is omitting, not using as many of the known top contact allergens as possible from our formulations. And we don't determine that just with us. We look at the hundreds of articles and the tens of thousands of patch tests done by specialists in the field to determine, and they list it themselves, what the top contact allergens are. SLS is sodium lauryl with Y, sulfate, and SLES is sodium lauryl, right, sulfate. And neither is on top contact allergen lists. And what's really interesting about this is they're pretty common. You can find them in lots and lots of things, and they've been around for a really long time, and they're still not top contact allergens, which in the world of hypoallergenicity and contact dermatitis is a good thing. Something that is much more common and used regularly has a higher chance of becoming a top contact allergen just because it's, it's in so much use, right? They can be irritants. I should point out almost anything can be an irritant. Water can be an irritant for too much exposure. And there is a very specific difference between an allergen and an irritant or an allergic reaction and an irritant reaction. And I'll put information on how to distinguish between the two or the differences between the two in the description below. But basically with an irritant, it kind of depends how much of it you're using at a time. Like with alcohol, alcohol is also per se not a top contact allergen. I'll put an interesting article on that later um, as well in the description. A lot of people using more and more of it during the pandemic, a lot more people got irritant reactions from the alcohol. But then if you stop using as much of it, then the reaction goes away. And when you use alcohol again, you're fine, especially at lower concentrations, right? In a true allergic reaction, once your cells say, mm, I recognize that and I don't like it, there's a T-cell mediated allergic reaction. And then anytime you use that thing, no matter how much or how little of it, you're gonna probably get a reaction. So SLS and SLES can be irritants. Like I said, almost anything can, your hair, uh, water, alcohol, but that's why we use them sometimes in some of our products at BMV because they're actually really well tolerated. And as with most irritants, the amount, the concentration of what's in the formulation really matters. So when we do use SLS or SLES in our formulations, they're much, much lower in concentration. Yeah, sulfates, honestly, as a rule, not so bad, particularly SLS and SLES. And especially if the rest of the formulation does not have allergens. So 
There. I hope that was helpful. You can check out a lot more allergen information on vmvinskin.com. If you would like to shop our products in the USA uh, and globally, it's vmvhypoallergenics.com. In the Philippines, it's vmvhypoallergenics.ph. And both websites also show where we sell, where we have distributors in different countries. And then if you would like to ask any questions, you can do so here in the comments or on Instagram or Facebook um, or on our websites. You can certainly contact us there and let us know what else you'd like to know. Otherwise, be safe. Have a fantastic day.